What is going on guys? It's Adam AK Marf and this is Marfugal News. I was going to do an update on the situation because there are many things happening all at the same time. Uh, today we're going to go over uh, how Putin is actually sending in peacekeepers into Ukraine. Uh, how uh, what What is going to happen at midnight tonight? Uh, again, that uh, I don't know what time zone that is, so we will have that listed over on the website. Remember, anything that I say here is going to be over on marfuglenews.com with sources. We make a full bibliography so you know exactly where this information is coming from. If it is an opinion, I will clarify so. Uh, things have obviously gotten a lot hotter. We have talked about this for now years. Uh, we were much ahead of mainstream. Mainstream, of course, is now all over this. Uh, and most people are, are very torn right now what is actually happening with Russia and Ukraine. People have been bombarded with the information that it's going to happen any day right now as far as the invasion of Ukraine, and people are sick of it at this point. Some people are even saying, let's just get this over with. Uh, trust me, you do not want this to happen. And again, uh, we'll talk about it on our show later on about this cyber threat that was uh, was just clarified by uh, many sources saying that uh, if we do end up doing these sanctions in response to this, uh, that we will have, uh, of course, a reaction of a cyber attack on the United States. So this is not good. It would be the first time that we had a massive, and we're talking about a major power, uh, do something very horrible to our cyber, uh, to our cyber uh, uh, grid, basically. So first off, it says Putin recognizes two breakaway regions in eastern Ukraine. The move will be seen as a huge provocation by Ukraine, the U.S., and its European allies, uh, and it could trigger further notice. Uh, it could uh, could again trigger further violence. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday formally recognized the independence of two Moscow-backed breakaway regions in eastern Ukraine, where Russia has been supporting armed separatists in an eight-year conflict. So this is something that's been going on for a long time. Uh, when first, you know, we get a lot of messages saying, hey, I can't believe this, you know, there's shelling in this area or there's uh, there's gunfire in this neighborhood or whatever uh, in Ukraine, it just started. Uh, when they don't realize that this has actually been going on for a long time. Now, first thing I thought of when they said that they were recognizing these two smaller areas and that they were going to send in peacekeepers, I was thinking, oh my gosh, is this confirming what President B said? You know, oh, well, it depends on what they do. Uh, if they just do a minor incursion or they do a full-scale invasion. And a lot of people thought that was him kind of given the green light to go and take a couple places, right? Well, that it again may not look like that either. It it uh, it looks like there are going to be things happening at midnight. I'll talk about that here in just a second. It says many experts believe that Moscow's formal recognition will effectively scuttle a previous ceasefire agreement that some Western allies hoped could provide a route out of the crisis. In a wide-ranging televised speech on Monday evening. Putin basically described Ukraine as a historical part of Russia that was illegitimately taken from Moscow and is now run by a puppet regime controlled by us and the West. Uh, again, it says, uh, this was a quote from him. He said, Ukraine is not just a neighboring country. They are a part of our culture, he said. It says in a, wide, uh, uh, in a, a widely seen uh, speech there, it says, noting that Ukraine has taken down some of its Soviet-era statues. He warned Kiev, you want de-communization, we will show you what that's like. So, some pretty harsh word coming straight from Putin. He signed a decree formally recognizing the self-proclaimed Donetsk uh, People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic, uh, which have been controlled by Russian-backed separatists since 2014. Alongside him were Denis Pushlin and Nilayd Push, uh, Pushlinchik, uh, heads of Dunusk and Luhansk republics. So you actually had them there. And then, of course, Putin orders Russian peacekeepers into U eastern Ukraine. This comes as tensions be between Russia and Ukraine continue to mount with fears of invasion growing. President Vladimir Putin recognized two breakaway regions in eastern Ukraine uh, as independent on Monday and ordered the Russian army to launch what Moscow called a peacekeeping uh, operation in the area, upping the ante in the crisis the West fears could unleash a major war. Putin told Russia's defense ministry to deploy troops into the two breakaway, uh, breakaway regions uh, to keep the peace 
in a decree uh, issued shortly after he announced recognition of the Russia-backed separatists there, drawing U.S. and European vows of new sanctions. So, ooh, they're going to do new sanctions, right? Uh, again, we've already heard from experts and actual members of his higher military saying he does not give a crap about sanctions. Uh, he, they said that they have now worked out their reliance issues. If you followed my show over the last four years, you would have seen all of these moves that Russia and China did to actually take their reliance off of the U.S. In fact, one, uh, one for example, is Russia and China were actually trading farmland so they could grow different things that are normally bought from the USA. If you saw the chart of who uh, the world countries have been doing greater uh, trade with over the last 30 years or 40 years now, since 1979 and 1981, uh, when China really started doing capitalism as a thing, uh, it, all of a sudden it went from the whole world trading with the U.S. to then trading with China and the entire planet besides, you know, uh, us in Canada and a couple other places, Australia, are all red. And uh, again, basically mostly trading with China. Uh, at midnight tonight, Russia closes airspace over the Sea of Azov. Uh, again, independent trackers reported that the number of Russian naval vessels entered the Sea of Azov as well on Sunday. Russia's Aeronautical Information Center issued a NOTAM, a notice to airmen on Sunday, uh, which will close most of the airspace of the sea uh, over the Sea of Azov starting at midnight between Sunday and Monday as the U.S. continued to warn uh, Russia intends to invade uh, Ukraine. Now, uh, one thing that was different about this is some of the notices said at midnight. Some uh, notices said that this has already gone into place. Uh, it's in a different time zone, like I said. It says the NOTAMs came amid heavy fighting in the separatist-held Donbass region and as CBS reporters on Sunday that the U.S. has intelligence that Russian commanders have been given the orders to proceed. So what we are hearing is a whole lot from the West saying that it's going to start but what is now changed is now Russia is physically telling the world it is now sending troops or a peacekeeping mission into areas of Ukraine under the guise that those are now, uh, of course, recognized uh, independent places. So this, again, is on top of now all of the drills. They have set up all of their, all of their Navy. They have set up their physical forces, over 160,000. Some are saying, in fact, an official note, number came out, 190 that the president hasn't confirmed. And that's according to us, right? But we do know uh, that, of course, tonight, they're, uh, or, or if this is already, I don't know what time zone this is compared to uh, Pacific and Eastern and here, uh, but if this has already gone down, that means any minute now they could start something. And that's, again, something we've heard for weeks, but now you actually see physical action and you see Russia saying that they're going to put it in. What does that mean for us? Well, right now it says that, uh, uh, again, the president is trying to clean up his comments about Russia and Ukraine. Uh, president B predicted Russia would invade Ukraine, but suggested there was a split among NATO members on how to respond if Moscow took action and stopped short of sending its troops across the border. Do you see how this works out? He said, oh, well, it depends if it's a full-scale invasion or if it's a minor incursion. So are they about to take uh, a couple parts and then everybody uh, reduces the amount of sanctions or whatever else? Uh, a general and several others it says the U.S. warns that Moscow has compiled lists of Ukrainians to target after they invade. So these are all people from U.S. Uh, US employees. Uh, it says the U.S. ambassador uh, to the U.N. has said that the U.S. has credible information that Russia has compiled lists of Ukrainians to be taken or perished uh, forcibly following an invasion. And then, of course, General Keeney. Uh, says, we're about to experience something we've never likely never had before. Uh, it says, Russia will react with a cyber attack. He says that if we do any sanctions, uh, they are uh, essentially setting it up, saying that we will be attacked with a cyber event. And this has been uh, uh, redundant among all of our leaders. So it's almost like they're letting us know that, you know, regardless of what happens with this, it, any of the sanctions go that way, and it looks like they're going to take at least a couple parts, that they're going to then hit us with the cyber event. So whether you think this is manufactured or not, 
it looks like, uh, you know, they're setting us up for some sort of cyber event. Again, this is something that has been all over the place. If you watch the videos that are actually uh, attached to marfuglenews.com, you'll see exactly what I mean. We are seeing it all over the place. They are setting us up to see us have some sort of cyber huge event. Uh, it says that President B is order, uh, ordering sanctions on the separatist regions of Ukraine after Putin decree. EU vows additional measures. So they're saying they're going to do that. And then our experts and our military, uh, different members have come out and said that Russia is going to respond directly to that with a major cyber event. How do they know that? Why are they so sure about it? Why do they talk about it like uh, they, they are? So again, make sure to go over and check all the sources for this video. You can see everywhere where we got this. And again, I don't believe anything until I see it. I don't believe uh, what, it, what the West is saying right now, and I believe um, most people do not. But I do believe that we are being set up for something massive. So people need to at least get their head out of the sand and figure out what's going on and be ready at a moment's notice for something, anything to happen at this point. We don't know what they're setting us up for, but there's a lot of warnings. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of things pointing towards a cyber event. Again, if you guys want to support us, we're independent. Go over to marfuglenews.com. Go check out marfuglenews.com slash prep. If you're not prepped up, there's no better time to buy it than yesterday. Again, the prices are only going up on prep supplies uh, through my Patriot Supply at marfuglenews.com. You actually have a price that's been set and they have not raised their prices. Plus, they have everything in stock, which most people don't. If you want long-term survival food, go there. And then again, if you want to protect yourself against an EMP, go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Go check it out. That helps our show and that helps you out with a discount. We are independent. We don't have a multi-channel network. We don't have a multi-billion dollar company behind us. We have you guys. So thank you. And again, share this independent broadcast with everybody you can. Uh, it really does take you physically sending this out to somebody to get it because it's not going to be put in trending. That's for damn sure. So again, don't believe anything you see until you see it with your own eyes. Uh, take everything with a grain of salt right now. But the one thing you should do, again, is get prepared and just be uh, mindful of anything and everything that's going on. And don't listen to every narrative that's out there. Just listen to yourself, listen to your gut, and pay attention to your actual surroundings where you are. Doesn't matter if it's in a city or out in the country. Pay attention. Watch the skies. That's a big thing. So, all right, you guys, have a good day. Be safe. Be prepared. And we'll see you on the live show over on Marfugal TV in just a little bit. Thank you, Ungato, and others that have supported. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out.